So it was the people who objected to being asked to stay home uh, because of COVID who were using the word lockdown to make it sound like a terrible, mm. you know, government imposition with, you know, guards standing outside your door carrying machine guns. Yeah, I never, it, 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 it was just a, a, you know, there's a, there's a, there's there's a communicable disease out there that's killing millions of people. Maybe it's a good idea if you didn't go to that movie theater. Hi, I'm Tamara, and this is Telus Talks with Tamara Taggart. Today I'm speaking with Wayne Grady. He's an award-winning author, editor, and translator. I'm talking to him about his latest book, Pandexicon, and language surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic. I hope you enjoy the conversation. Hi, Wayne. It's great to see you. Hi, Tamara. Great to be here. So uh, today we're going to talk about, you know, language and your book. Um, you you pu- you uh, published this book, I guess, after the, well, during the pandemic. We yeah. are still really technically, are we not still in a yeah. pandemic? Well, technically we're not, but realistically ah. we're still in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not over. Exactly. Pandexicon. Can you hold it uh, up there for a second, Wayne, your book? Sure. So. You you like language. This is I, this yeah. is your this is your thing. <laughs> well, I'm a writer. I've been a writer since before. my grade three teacher told me when I when you know you go around the class and say what do you want to be when you grow up. I stood up and said I want to be a I don't know engineer or something like that. She said no, you're going to be a writer. That was in grade three, and I remember that. Uh, and I have been writing, you know, not since grade three, but I've been writing it for as long as I can remember. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, for any writer there, you become fascinated with words because words, words mean things and, and, and you can use, you can misuse them to, and not say what you want to say. But if you want to say what you want to say, you have to know what words to use and, and the nuances and the, and the, uh, implications, uh, of, and the connotations and the annotations of various, of it, of every word you use. So Pandexicon is not your first language book but no back when back when um uh harper was prime minister actually when harper was campaigning to be prime minister i don't really remember when that was but it seems couple it was before covid yes Uh, it was definitely before (laughs) covid (laughs) i don't know when either but i I, i'm with you yeah (laughs) anyway i (laughs) I heard I heard him say in a campaign talk speech that uh, there's no such thing as Canadian culture, uh, that there is North American culture, and by which he meant there's American culture, and so I started thinking about that and um, took exception to it because I could think of several words and several phrases that we use in Canada that nobody uses in the states. They have no idea what they're talking about, what we would talking about when we use things, you know, uh, when. Uh, a Newfoundlander says, "I'm wearing I, I'm wearing pogey boots." W- what does that mean? I mean, most many Canadians don't know what that means. Um, or uh, do does someone from Texas really understand what ice means? Uh, you know, um, does does a, does someone who watches hockey in in Florida uh, do they are they watching the same game that we're watching? Uh, you know, when those of us who have grown up playing hockey in the backyard or or in a local rink. So I mean, there is. You know, the, guess what? There is a Canadian culture, and I and I believed that it was it was apparent and used in in the language. So if we use language that other countries don't understand as deeply as we do, then then that means we have a culture that that doesn't that that you know needs to be uh, thought about and and celebrated. And so in pen in pandexicon, I do the same thing as I did. <laughs> As I did in uh, in bringing back the Chinook, as I I took a word that was used to de- talk about when we talk about COVID or the pandemic, we use certain words over and over again. Um, and so I began I I began to write down those words because I knew I was going to write something about the pan the pandemic. I mean it it would be like living in Germany in 1939 and not writing about the Second World War, uh, not to write about yeah, as a writer. Um, and so I started making notes, but it, because it was a moving target, um, you know, I didn't know how long it was going to last. Uh, and, and so I didn't, I didn't want to start writing like a history of the pandemic because it, you know, might not ever end and there'd be no end to the book. 
Um, and so I started taking notes on the various words that we were using. And I noticed that many words kept coming up over and over again. And we began to put new words into the language or shift words from other areas of, of, of discur discourse into, the Eng into our language and mainly the English language for which I apologize to the rest of the world. There's, there's some, there's some, uh, there's some uh, German words and there's some French words, but, but mainly I, I confine myself to the English language. But by, by focusing on the words that, that we used, I, the, I, I was able, I think I, that's how I pinned the pandemic down so that, you know, for example, we, we still use the word face mask uh, and we, use, we began using it. When I came back from Mexico in 2020, I noticed that a few people in the airport were wearing face masks, but not very many. And that was an unusual thing, right? Because, uh, you know, we weren't, before that face mask was something I wore when I played hockey. Um, now, uh, suddenly it was something that everybody is supposed to be wearing and there were different kinds of face masks and people were making face masks out of old t-shirts and people were making face masks out of scarves and wearing face, wearing masks from hospitals, you know, those, uh, surgical, those light blue surgical masks and, and, uh, and, and, and the government was telling us, you don't need to wear a mask unless you, you have symptoms. And then, you know, a week later, oh no, everybody should be wearing a mask. So we, we, so face mask became one of those terms that was popping up everywhere, uh, suddenly. And I mean, that's a, that's not a great example. I mean, it, there were face masks before and they were used for the same thing during the pandemic. But, you know, my, my, my sense is that, you know, we, we now know the difference between various kinds of face masks. Would you have known the difference between an N95 mask and a... And a, and a I didn't even know an N95 existed. No, I thought a exactly. face mask was a face mask. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. Uh, and suddenly, we were, we were ordering them by the millions and passing them out in various places. And I do want to talk more about language, but before we do that, we always thank our guests for being here. So we ask them to choose a Canadian uh, nonprofit you chose the Pili Island Bird Observatory, and we will be giving them $500 in your name as a thank you, Wayne, for you being here. So thank you for choosing them. Well, and um, no, it's it's really important, and uh, they will be getting $500 as a thank you uh, for you being here. Great. So we were talking about, you know, language, and it's so easy because your book is about the pandemic and the language and how, I guess maybe we started using language in a different way too, right? Well, we, we borrowed a lot of phrases from other parts yeah. of the language. For, you know, so for example, pivot, you know. Uh, oh word. gosh, I really learned to love that word. I yeah. started to really, I mean, hate that word. Oh, hate, okay. I really okay. hated it after a while because it's all I heard, it's all we heard from public health here, right? We have yeah. to learn how to pivot. We have to learn how to pivot. I think we all heard it across the country. And I was like, if someone and, tells me to pivot one more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my book, I, I say that, you know, I first used the word when I was playing basketball in high school, right? You said, you have to learn how to pivot to get away from, a, a, if you've got the ball, you pivot away from an oppose, op, opposing player. Uh, but it, it it became used in, in business uh, with, with businesses that had to suddenly come up with a different game plan because their old, their old one wasn't working because no one was going into restaurants or no one was going into clothing stores. And so they had to find some other way to make money or else go under. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's what pivoting is. Some of the bigger corporations pivoted hugely. And, uh, and, and, and one of the, one of the uh, definitions of a good pivot is one that continued to be used after, after the lockdowns were over and and another another one that i like that that we brought from the stock market is uptick i don't know how many times you've heard you've seen a, a news a newspaper headline that's it's you know there's a there's a slight uptick in in cases in new covid cases in montreal or an uptick in deaths in south america uh I, 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 and then there were the, these prison words that we started using lockdown lockdown was a uh yeah, it was, it was used as it, it, in prisons when there was a riot. They would lock down the cell block, and so so nobody got in or out. And uh, and so I th I think we use words that have that kind of negative connotation because we have a negative connotation about being locked down 
uh, you know, with COVID. But being locked down, don't you think that that is a weird word to use? I don't know. I mean, I think so, because a lockdown at a prison is very different than asking you to stay home for a few weeks uh, uh, because there's a virus and we want to try to contain it. So it was the people who objected to being asked to stay home uh, because of COVID who were using the word lockdown to make it sound like a terrible, you know, government imposition with, you know, guards standing outside your door carrying machine guns. Yeah, I never, it, it, it was just a, a, you know, there's a, there's a, there's, there's a communicable disease out there that's killing millions of people. Maybe it's a good idea if you didn't go to that movie theater or down to the beach or to that rock concert or to that baseball game. And, and, and you know, people, some countries had really severe lockdowns, like China had a severe lockdown. Uh, Australia, New Zealand had lockdowns in various cities for, for, for a time. And in those places, the government, um, you know, military actually did enforce those lockdowns. Uh, we tried that, Doug Ford tried that here in Ontario with his emergency break uh, thing in, in 2021. Uh, when he reimposed uh, COVID restrictions, making asking people to stay home, and then empowered the police to stop people on the street and that and make sure that they were uh, what they were traveling in an essential. Right. So then we have this word that is, you know, a scary word. It's a scary to word, most yeah. people, and then and then something like that happens. So it really does it adds fuel to the fact that, oh, this is a very bad thing. And now look what's happening. Now the yeah. police are coming for us. It's yeah, also the I, word, right? So, yeah. I, that, so I was just going to say, but it also goes with the word quarantine, right? Like quarantine is a scary word. Yeah. Well, because it's only used when there's something really scary out there, you know, uh, you know, you can die if you don't do this. Uh I mean, originally, and and originally, it was meant to be scary because it, it, it's a six, 15th century word that was became in, into the language during the during the plague years in in Europe. The plague killed seventy five percent of the population of Europe in the 14th century. So, sh and they thought it came from from Asia, as as we did with with COVID, uh, and shows ships arriving in ports in European ports were not allowed to debark or unload their cargo until they'd spent 40 days on an island off the coast of Italy or France or Spain or whatever. And those 40 days were called the quarantine. Quarant, quarant. Uh, and uh, so that's a lo an old word and a scary word because of how many people uh, it, infect it affected and infected. So how does it start, Wayne? Like how, like you said, oh, people who didn't like being told to stay home, they started calling it a lockdown. Is that how it starts when, when we, when we um, sort of, you know, reuse an old word or we, we, when we're choosing our words, like I notice, like the word woke right now, right? But like people are using woke in the wrong way and they're using it as a very, like, it's very interesting to me how these these words are pulled from different areas of our history, if you will, and and used now in 2023 in a way that the word was never really intended to be used. Or, or, it, or it was intended, but not to be applied to something as like, like a disease or like COVID. I mean, Susan Sontag in her book, uh, Illness as Metaphor, writes about when did we start describing cancer as a war between, you know, uh, an invasion and, an, you know, as a battle against cancer, you know, he lost his battle against cancer or he's waging a battle against cancer. He, uh, using military terms, uh, to talk about medical issues. And that's when I, that's why I, I uh, mentioned lockdown. Uh, but we, you know, it, apart from, apart from deliberately trying to, to, give a sense of whether whether something is a good thing or a good, not a good thing like lockdown. We also do it kind of subliminally. What, what we, we, we use words uh, to describe something that indicates how we feel deeply inside. Uh, and, and one example of that is uh, long haul COVID. People who have, we, we now just say long COVID, but early on it was called long haul COVID. Uh, and that, you know, obviously it's not a good thing, but uh, the, calling it long haul COVID shows that we we acknowledge somehow deep within us that it's not a good thing because a long haul 
is is something we don't look forward to right that you know you're in for the long haul means you know you better you better hunker down and and you know stock up on stuff uh and so we're indicating by saying oh he he has long haul covid meaning that you know it, it's it's an unfortunate thing and it is but we show that in the language yes <laughs> i bet i bet a different a different uh creative expression for sure yeah. So but Pandexicon is your is your book that people can buy now. Uh, it's available wherever you buy your favorite book. And your website is, it's amazing because I learned so much about just about translation and all that sort of stuff and, and all of your work that you've been doing. So your website is waynegrady.ca. All of the information's there. And of course, your book is available wherever you buy books. Wayne, this was a great conversation. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. I enjoyed it very much. That's it. Thanks for listening to another episode of Tell Us Talks with Tamara Taggart. Be sure to subscribe so you can join us every Tuesday for another conversation. You can also check out our website, tellus.com slash podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tell Us Talks.